Morning, everyone. Morning. I'm the Reverend William Levwood. My pronouns are he and him. I'm the minister here at Akatink Unitarian Universalist Church. You might notice I'm wearing a, a mask when I'm not speaking from the pulpit today. I just have a little cold. I don't have COVID. I tested, but it is cases are rising, as we shared in our newsletter this week. So with that, let us take a deep breath, as much as we're able to, as we center ourselves for worship. We open and welcome to the ancestral people of this land, acknowledging that our church, like all of Burke, rests on the unceded territory of the Manahoac tribe of the Great Sioux Nation. We seek healing and the realization of justice with the people of this land who live on in their descendants, the present day members of the Monacan Indian Nation, the Patawomac Indian Tribe of Virginia, and the Piscataway Indian Nation. We honor the ancestors as we move toward healing so that all together shall know full justice one day. Welcome to Akatink Unitarian Universalist Church. I'm Christina Watts, and my pronouns are she and her, and I'm happy to be your worship associate today. I hope you got a name tag or have put your name on your Zoom name tag. If you need help with that, please let us know in the chat. If you aren't new to Akatink, look around. Do you see people that you haven't met or haven't spoken to in a while? These people like you and want to meet you. Help us live up to our mission to be a welcoming and inclusive spiritual home for all by reaching out and making a connection. By visiting this congregation, newcomers are in a transition moment, and people in transitions are more open to new friendships. This means that your new best friend might be here this morning, and this is your chance to get to know them before someone else does. Whether you're a longtime member or a newcomer or something in between, we encourage you to stay for our social hour online and in person immediately after the service. Uh, we're so delighted that you decided to join us today. Welcome. Now it's time to light our chalice. And we've, for quite a while now, you've been saying words when we light our chalice. But uh, we have a chalice lighting words that you're not going to say, that I'm going to say this morning. They're a little on the longer side. They're from our new proposed Article 2. They're from what's called the inspiration section, which would replace the sources. As Unitarian Universalists, we proclaim that direct experiences of transcending mystery and wonder are a primary source of inspiration. These experiences open our hearts, renew our spirits, and transform our lives. We draw upon and are inspired by sacred, secular, and scientific understandings that help us make meaning and live into our values. We respect the histories, context, and cultures in which these understandings were created and are currently practiced. These sources ground us and sustain us in ordinary, difficult, and joyous times. Aware of the religious ancestries we inherit and grateful for the experiences that move us and the diversity which enriches our faith, we are called to ever deepen and expand our wisdom. So I shared that this morning as our child slide because this month's Soul Matters theme is mystery, and it comes from that inspiration section, that phrase where it says that we are moved by personal experiences of transcending mystery and wonder. It's rooted in our transcendentalist history. So today we're going to introduce some solstice Im imagery and explore the power of darkness, a darkness that is fertile, that can give birth to love, to peace, and to justice. Next Sunday, we're going to look at what it might mean to surrender to something greater than ourselves, 
to experiences of transcending mystery and wonder, whether that be in the embrace of community or in the embrace of something else that we can't, can't quite name. And we'll have some music to honor Hanukkah next Sunday as well. The following Sunday, we'll move even more into our exploration of winter solstice with a service from Sacred Wheel, our pagan affinity group, collaboratively created with your staff. We're gonna bring you a service that lifts up this age-old festival found in cultures across the world that honors the hinge point when the shortest day of the year and the longest night begin to turn in the opposite direction with the days getting longer and the nights getting shorter. And this year, perhaps you've noticed or maybe you hadn't, I've noticed it months and months ago because I'm a UU minister, both Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve fall on Sundays. So for Christmas Eve, we'll have our normal morning service and it'll be focused more on the secular symbols of Christmas. So Santa Claus, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, Frosty the Snowman. And then we'll have an afternoon into evening candlelit service focused on the religious symbols of the birth of Jesus and the hope for peace on earth and goodwill to all. And then our New Year's service will be an ensemble service of reflections with AUC members that will be a deeper dive into what we're exploring today, how we can dream love into being. So glad to be back with you guys. Thank you to everyone that sent me in some way, shape, or form condolences uh, regarding my mother-in-law. I really appreciate that. So thank you very much. You're an awesome community, and I'm so grateful to be a part of it. So this morning I was reflecting on the fact that it's December 3rd. It really is December 3rd. Like, where did this year go? Um, I'm excited for the myriad of fun holiday activities we have ahead of us anticipating the new year. Often in December, I do a lot of reflection and I look at everything that went right during the year, everything that kind of went wrong, everything in between, the joys, the sorrows, and I set my intentions, you know, for the, the new year ahead. And I think many do this, and they find it to be a helpful practice prior, you know, when setting those intentions. So there's a tellable tale from Soul Matters that Rev Love uh, shared with me that I wanted to share with you all this morning, because it's very fitting with the new year ahead, and also the discussion of, you know, darkness and birth and all that that means to us. So as you listen to the tale, consider this question. Where do I find rest and peace? The Rebirth of the Sun by Starhawk, Diane Baker, and Ann Hill. Circle round and I'll tell you a story about when the sun was born again. It was the middle of winter and the sun had grown very old. All year long, the sun had worked very hard, rising and setting day after day. All year long, the sun had fed everybody on earth, shining and shining, giving energy to the trees and the flowers and the grasses so they could grow and feed the animals and birds and insects and people. All year, the sun's gravity held tight to the spinning ball of the earth and the twirling ball of the moon and the eight other whirling planets as they traveled around and around and around until the poor sun was dizzy watching it all. Now the poor tired sun could barely make it up in the morning and after a very short time needed to sleep again. So the days grew shorter and the nights grew longer until the day was so short it was hardly worth getting up for. Night felt sorry for the sun. Come to my arms and rest, child, she said. After all, I am your mother. 
You were born out of my darkness billions of years ago, and you will return to me when all things end. Let me cradle you now as I shelter every galaxy and star in the universe. So night wrapped her great arms around the sun, and the night was very long indeed. Why does the dark go on so long, ash children all over the earth? Won't the sun ever come back again? The sun is very tired, the old one said. But maybe if you children say thank you for all the things the sun does for us, the light may return in the morning. The children sang songs to the sun. They thought about all the things that the sun gave them. We're going to pause really quick. And I want to ask you all, what do you think that the children might have thanked the sun for? Oh, this is really specific, but you know when like there's the sun has really got high in the sky and it shines through the leaves and there's just this really beautiful green. Mm. Wonderful. This That's beautiful specific sand. beauty. Yeah. The generosity that the ha the sun has for itself to give itself love and to take breaks for itself. Flowers and food. Flowers and food. Warmth. That might, be my, that might be my favorite, warmth. <laughs> life itself, because without the sun, there would be no life here. Life itself, yeah. The measurement of time. Oh. The measurement of time. Yeah, the sun is the primary source of energy for everything. So much to be grateful for. So let's continue. Thank you for growing the lettuces and the corn and the rice and the wheat, they said. Thank you for growing the trees of the forests and the seaweed in the oceans and the krill that feeds the whales. Thank you for stirring the air and making winds that bring rain. Every time a child said thank you, the sun began to feel a little warmer, a little brighter. Wrapped safely in the arms of night, the sun grew younger and younger. At last, the children had to go to bed. We will stay up and wait for the sun to rise again, the old one said. Can't we stay up too, the children asked. You can try, but you will get too sleepy, the old one said. But you can each light a candle, because all fire is a spark of the sun's fire. Put your candle in a very safe place and let it keep vigil for you as you sleep and dream of sunrise. So the children lit their candles and put them in a very safe place. And each flame was a little spark of the sun's fire. And the sun peeped out from between the arms of night and saw all the little fires and began to feel warmer and brighter and younger still. Early in the morning, the old ones woke the children. Together, they climbed a high hill and faced the east, the direction of sunrise. They sang songs to the sun and ran around trying to keep warm. They waited and waited to see what dawn would bring. The sky began to turn from black to indigo to blue. Slowly, the sky grew light. A golden glow crept over the horizon. Night opened her great arms, and in a burst of brightness, the sun appeared, new and strong and shining. For in the long night, the sun had rested well and grown young from the songs and the thanks of the children, young as a brand new baby, born out of night once more. Everybody cheered, and the children jumped up and down. The sun has returned, the sun is reborn, the people cried, and they danced and sang to celebrate the birth of a new day, and then went home to breakfast. So again, I ask, you know, consider that to yourself. Where do I find peace and rest, and how can I give peace and rest to others? Thank you. The reading today uh, will sound familiar to you. It is an excerpt from the story that we heard during the Time for All Ages, 
Um, it's an excerpt from The Rebirth of the Sun by Starhawk, Diane Baker, and Anne Hill. All year long, the sun worked very hard. And now the poor, tired sun could barely make it up in the morning. And after a very short time, needed to sleep again. So the days grew shorter and the nights grew longer until the day was so short it was hardly worth getting up for. Night felt sorry for the sun. Come to my arms and rest, child, she said. After all, I am your mother. You were born out of my darkness billions of years ago, and you will return to me when all things end. Let me cradle you now as I shelter every galaxy and star in the universe. So night wrapped her great arms around the sun. Don't we all feel like the sun sometimes, the sun in this story? Worn out by the daily grind, the burden of shining bright with productivity leading us to a kind of heat stroke that we call burnout. In our story, even the sun needs a rest from time to time. Or more accurately, every day, the sun needs to rest in darkness. And in every year, there is a period of time when the sun needs to rest in darkness more than at other times of the year. Now, of course, this isn't literally true of the sun, but it is true of our experience of the sun. And it used to be, more or less, that this dark time of the year would encourage the human animal to slow down and make more time for rest. I always feel a bit conflicted this time of year. I feel like the lighting of lights and holiday decorating with bright colors and festive imagery and gift giving, I feel like all of this is our way of giving thanks, like the children give thanks to the sun in the story. But then on the other hand, it can feel like a rush to do and do and do to be even more productive precisely when nature is guiding us to get quiet and still, gently welcoming us into the soothing arms of the dark night. We are both the children calling forth the sun's return and the weary sun in need of growing young again in the embrace of night's nurturing darkness. The womb, after all, is a dark place, a gentle darkness, soft and still, as we sang earlier. What does it mean to honor this need to come down into the darkness, into this soft and gentle womb? Too often we associate darkness with evil this can be found even in ordinary dictionary definitions, which to share some examples define darkness as gloom, as lacking in understanding, as lacking in compassion, referring to death, referring to suffering, as the absence of moral or spiritual powers, as in the phrase, the powers of darkness. These are actual definitions we can find in the dictionary. So what about the other aspect of darkness? What about this soft, gentle womb of darkness? What about the restful darkness that makes us young again, that renews and revitalizes us, like we say that the inspirations and the many sources that we draw from can renew, revitalize us, transform our lives. That can help us to hear or even to sing a blessed song of love eternal. What about this birthing darkness? I believe that we need this birthing darkness, that we need to make space for it in our lives that we need to prioritize it in our society. Just as a field needs to lay fallow, we need fallow 
time in our lives. Otherwise, our lives, just like an overworked land, can be stripped of the nutrients needed for nurturing life into being. Each of us needs to come down into the darkness and let the one you want to be, be born. We may not even know who or what this person or part of ourselves that needs to be born is. That is precisely the gift darkness has to offer us, that opening to the mystery so that we might let what needs to arise arise. Come down into the darkness. Come down into the darkness. Come down into the darkness and let, let, allow what needs birthing to be born from that open, embracing womb that is the unknown, that is the glorious and transcendent mystery that is beyond our understanding until we open to the mystery so that new understanding can be born within us. So if you allow me, I'm going to pivot for a moment. This sermon is titled Birthing Darkness, Birthing Justice. And I want to talk about the the birthing justice part because I think that it's also true that the human birthing experience And it's true about reproductive justice. And it's true about justice making of any kind that we need to go down into that birthing darkness to birth justice. The United States has the highest infant infant and maternal mortality rates of any high income country in the world, despite spending the most on health care. And rates of infant and maternal mortality within the United States vary greatly based on ethnicity with much higher rates of mortality for African Americans and for indigenous Americans. Let me pause here for a second, just to point out when I say mortality, I mean death. A higher rate of infant mortality means more babies are dying. A higher rate of maternal mortality means more mothers are dying. More babies and mothers are dying in the United States than in other high-income countries. More black babies and black mothers, more American Indian babies and American Indian mothers. Roughly two and a half times more babies and mothers are dying than white American and Asian American babies and mothers right here in this country. And there are a variety of reasons for this disparity. These reasons include poverty, lack of access to health care, a greater number of cesarean births, unconscious bias on the part of health care providers leading to substandard care for African American and American Indians giving birth, and the long-term toll of racism on African-American and American Indian mothers. I want to pause on the racial disparity, because even though I mentioned that poverty is one of the reasons for this health disparity, it's also true that racism is a reason separate from poverty. According to a 2023 article on maternal mortality from Yale Medicine, High-income black mothers have worse maternal and infant health outcomes than low-income white mothers, which suggests, the Yale Medicine article says, suggests a system failure rather than a woman not taking care of her health. Our community partner, VICPP, is supporting legislation that would require implicit bias training for medical personnel who have direct contact with persons who are or may become pregnant to complete two hours of continuing education related to implicit bias and cultural competency in healthcare at least once every other license renewal cycle. And VICPP shares that studies have repeatedly shown that African American women are not listened to by their doctors receive fewer needed tests and referrals, and have poorer health outcomes. 
The Virginia Maternal Mortality Review Team found that 51% of pregnancy-related deaths are due to provider-related factors in patient care delivery to black women, regardless of income and insurance, resulting in a delay or lack of diagnosis, treatment, follow-up, and referrals. 51% connected to provider-related lack of care from unconscious bias. VICPP is also supporting legislation that would work towards setting up maternal health hubs to ensure better access to needed health care for birthing persons, and a bill that would allow midwives to administer life-saving prescription medication during labor. These are just some of the specific interventions that are needed and you can help make these needed changes by participating in this congregation's legis legislative advocacy. You can respond to emails and write letters to legislators. I encourage you to contact John Peterson, who I don't think is here today. So let's raise our hands. Who else? Ed Kringer's here. You can. John, John does federal. Okay, so John does federal. So state would be Ed Kringer, actually. So you can contact Ed if you'd like to be added to AUC's legislative advocacy list to receive updates about a variety of issues, including this issue of health care disparities. We need these specific interventions, and we also need broad-based societal change to address the fundamental issues of how we approach birth, of income equality and poverty, and of racism. This, too, I would say, calls us to a birthing darkness a birthing darkness that can birth justice, that can birth reproductive justice and birth all kinds of justice because we need to be willing to question our assumptions and our habituated ways of doing things if we are going to be able to open to the emergence of new ways of doing things, to let the one we need to be be born. We need to come down into that darkness. May it be so in our own lives. May it be so in our advocacy and our work for justice. May we come down into that darkness and let the love you want to be, be born. May it be so. Amen, 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 and blessed be. All right, please rise now in body or spirits, and you can join hands if you're comfortable. And join me in our closing words. As we extinguish our chalice, I invite you to join me now in our community blessing with these words of David Bumbau. This church is dedicated to the proposition that behind all our differences and beneath all of our diversity, there is a unity that makes us one and binds us forever together in spite of time, death, and the space between the stars. We pause now in silent witness to that unity. <laughs>